My name is Jeannie. I am currently a second year medical student at UCL. I first went to the UK when I was 14 years old um, and entered year 10. And so I completed my fifth and sixth form education at Brighton College. For my A-levels, I took biology, chemistry, psychology and maths. Um, I also did an EPQ, which is kind of like a dissertation research qualification. I used to attend German Swiss International School, and before that I attended Singapore International School. I have to point out that I feel like before I went to the UK, I was a very stressed out person. Mm -hmm. I think the smallest like pop quizzes and in-class tests would really freak me out um, and I'd get so nervous. But then I feel like once I went to Bryson College, I kind of realised that this kind of thinking is wrong. And with the support system that I had in Bryson College, with like my boarding, uh, boarding staff and like my lovely matron, teachers and friends, I feel like I really was able to develop coping skills for my stress. And so my experience at Bryson College was a lot less stressful than it would have been if I did not go to Bryson College. But what I find different is that I guess British schools encouraged me more to develop my passion in certain things. So for me it'd be like biology, chemistry, whereas I didn't feel much of that when I was in an international school. I think what Bryson College really emphasises and what it allows to get students to the same level as other schools which do more work is that we have a really good work-life balance. That is something that I really do appreciate um, when it comes to Brighton College. So not only do we work hard, so for example, I took 10 GCSEs, I took five A-levels, I did competitions, UKMT, and like the, um, and other bio biology chemistry competitions on the side. Um, but I also played really hard. I, was, I played field hockey for the first time. I was on my school's volleyball team. I did volunteering at a local charity shop. Brighton College is all about balance which gives you the motivation to do well at school and to perform well in other aspects of your life as well. There's a lot of support provided at Brighton College. I think, first of all, in general, the teachers are so supportive, they're so kind. Um, I remember one time in biology, I really couldn't get my head around like a certain concept and the teachers stayed with me for like 30 minutes just to explain it. Um, in terms of like a more constructive, I guess, support, more formal support, there's also things that are called academic clinics. So during lunch times or after school, um, the teachers would like sit in the classroom and we would go in. You can ask them as many questions as you want. Or sometimes they'll use the clinics as review sessions. So they'll like cover a specific topic that people don't really understand. And things like this, I feel like, make the student feel like less stressed and they know that they've got the support um, and the teachers backing behind like their academic. I really like this approach because it's not like they're forcing you to do something, it's rather they're just holding your hand and guiding you through, which mm. is very useful. In terms of university preparation, um, there was quite a bit done by Brighton College and quite a bit that I had to do on my own initiative. So Brighton College has a pretty comprehensive um, university advisor team. When I was at Brighton College, there were four staff members, I think, who were specifically focused on helping people get through university applications. Um, and so uh, besides this team of university advisors, there'd also be like a bigger group of teachers who are subject specific, who would help you get into that specific subject you want to enter. So uh, for instance, for medicine, we're pretty special. There's a lot that we have to do. We have to do UCAT, BMAT, we have to do interviews compared to other people. And so we had our own medicine university advisor who studied medicine, but is now a biology teacher. Uh, he really helped me a lot through the entire process, not only like through giving us tips and holding weekly sessions to like learn how to write personal statement, learn how to do the UCAT. He also provided us with a lot of emotional and mental support because it is hard applying for medicine. Um, there's a lot you have to do and it's a lot, uh, it's a lot of stress, especially as an international applicant where there is a cap set by the government on how many people get, can get in. So for an instance in um, UCL where I'm currently at, uh, there is a, um, there are 336 students who entered and only I think 24 of them are international. So it's very competitive 
um, and I struggled a lot mentally. Besides the university team, um, who are like subject specific for UK universities, there's also another uh, another few advisors who are specific for US and Canada um, applications. So uh, besides applying to the VC or other UK universities, I also applied to University of Toronto in Canada. And so um, I had a can Canadian university advisor and she was so sweet, she helped me through the entire process. She helped me choose a good university to go to. She helped me narrow down what I wanted to study. And so you've got a really comprehensive support. In terms of what I had to do on my own initiative, I had to do all the extracurriculars by myself. There was no help organizing them. I really had to take the initiative and go out of my comfort zone to ask like local charity shops, oh, can I uh, volunteer here? I had to go out and like organize like programs for people in order to showcase my organization and leadership skills. And so whilst writing college does give you a lot of support, you do def def uh, definitely have to take your own initiative to do other things. I did do both UCAT and BMAT. So for the UCAT, it's basically um, an exam, an online exam that you take at a like a, like a local center, and it's basically comes in the form of like an IQ test. So it tests like your passing recognition, your comprehension skills, um, and also your situational judgment. And I found that really hard compared to the BMAT. I think because it was such abstract skills, I didn't really know how to revise for it. Um, but I did a lot of practice papers and I did a lot of mock exams and it turned out fine. Let's talk about the first time I want to go to UCAT as well as possible. But you don't have to worry about it. The opportunity to study the new e-fourth-century study group is one to one to teach you how to deal with UCAT. 5-0-0-3-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-5-0-
I feel like before, when I was just living at home, it was like, hi, bye, this happened at school. Whereas when you're further apart, I think you start to treasure your relationship with your parents more and you start to talk to them more and talk about deeper things. I did call my parents quite a lot. I call them every day, I think. If you have any questions, you can call me at 5 o'clock, 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 5 o'clock